Hi guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. So with me again today, I'm Michelle Makokota. How are you, madam? <laughs> I'm fine. How are you doing? I'm good, thanks. Thank I'm you. good, thanks. So today we're just going to talk about our lives as realtors, really, really. And yeah, let's let's talk to people a little bit, and um, probably can start by telling us how and how you inspired. What inspired you to join in the real estate field? To be honest, it was the money. <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, I'm being honest. It wow. was the money. The commission. Yes. Wow. Hmm. Why do I have to go around? It was the money. Wow. Being my own boss also. Wow. So we're saying the recent market is moneyed for agents. Yes. And it's flexible. I get to be my own boss. Good. As long as you deliver, good. no one is calling you every mm -hmm. minute. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. That's a good one. Okay, with the real estate market uh, ups and downs, you know how it is maybe be just going quiet and it can be very busy. Mm -hmm. How do you stay engaged? Like, how do you keep it going? How do you, yeah. Okay, um, it has its ups and downs. That's very true. Yeah. So I yeah. think um, discipline. When it has its ups, you don't have to swindle every last dollar that you have because there are dry seasons to way. come. Mm -hmm. So normally what I do is, I always, when I get paid, normally we get paid in lumps. Mm -hmm. I think you know that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when I get paid, I spread my my, my money in, in the event that I don't make a sale July, August, September, October, November. Then I use that because it would be a lot of money. That's, 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 a, that's good advice. It's mm -hmm. especially for those that are just entering the industry. Yes, don't that's use it advice. all at once. Otherwise, I don't want to lie. You can see very broke realtors. Hi, are we in the same industry? You wonder. Yes. Wonder. Being broke is okay, but there's a degree that removes professionalism <laughs> also. Honestly, I'm being real. I've wow. seen some realtors ask wow. for fewer money from people. Yeah. That is wrong. That We're too. professionals. We should detach ourselves from people in the streets that call themselves agents. We're not like those people. That's true. So That's I think true. we need to be disciplined. In as much if we are disciplined, we then get to keep our professionalism. That's good. Yes. That's a good one. All right. Um, I'm sure you deal with a lot of clients, Come. and um, some of them, especially first-time home buyers, can be a nuisance. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I won't say this aloud. I won't say this aloud. <laughs> but how do you deal with them? Because they are still afraid in the industry. You know how it is. How you know you what? I actually don't find them to be a challenge anymore. Wow. Honestly. Anymore. Anymore. Okay. Because I, I. I now play the advisory role. I get to advise you. The boys in your court. Mm -hmm. I just advise you and mm -hmm. you make a decision. Mm -hmm. But because I'm a good advisor, you end up taking the best advice. And yes. you end up purchasing if you're to. Because first time home buyers can be difficult. Yes. Because they want everything to be right. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I just play the advisory role. It has, mm -hmm. it has helped me a lot. Okay, that's good. And then talking of the sellers, I'm sure some of you come, uh, some some of them come to you with, you know, especially first time home sellers. Mm -hmm. I must say, mm -hmm. they come with ridiculous prices mm -hmm. on the market to sell. How how do you price? First of all, how do you price your properties? I do market appraisal. Okay. Yes, I do market appraisal. I just look up. All right. Uh, what's the selling price in the area? All right. Uh, I. I I also use my mind, okay, this property is going for such and such, but it doesn't have this and this and that. Okay. So my, my client's property can, you know, uh, be a little bit pricey because of such and such. And okay. It always works. All right. Me. Okay. And then do you charge for market appraisals? Why should I? Okay. I'm selling your property. It's just me advising you. Mm -hmm. So that's property advisory. That's yes. the advisory role. Yes. All right. And then how do you deal with clients that come in with their, you know, ridiculous prices? I should phrase my words <laughs> better way. Actually, they do also, come with ridiculous prices. They do come. You know, they'll come with a property in Wesley and they'll tell you I want 500000 I've I've gotten to a point where I weigh. I weigh. Do I want this? No. Because you know what? First of all, I tell them, yes, we have a problem with clients that over-invest. Hey, they'll put their all. 
and there now they want to charge exactly. for that exactly. but exactly. they don't realize in some places they're selling values you can't find a property in Warren Park going for 100,000 what is that so what I'm saying is I advise you you can't attain this amount mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and if they want to stick to that it says I can pa I can say pass mm -hmm. because I'll be wasting my fuel selling something that I know might not fetch a buy that's a good one that is number one. Mm -hmm. If I know there are some slim chances I might sell it, I can go and proceed with it. I give it a month or two. I'll come back to you. Ma'am, sir, remember I once advised you this was too much. I even I had even a single inquiry. What are you thinking? I would be like, okay, give him more, two more months. Okay, ma'am, after two months I'll be back. Ma'am, we haven't had an inquiry. The other one that we had, he expresses two prices. Mm -hmm. I think we sometimes we end up getting to where we settle for a price that is reasonable. Yes. That is, if the person is yes. serious about selling. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. And then, what advice would you give to sellers who are preparing their homes for sale? Thank you. Um, sellers who are preparing their homes for sale. Well, if they're still building, I think it's good not to overinvest. Okay. Yes, I think it's good for to not overinvest. Like what I'm saying, when you do over invest now, you want to return on the amount that oh, you have used. Oh, yes. yes. So I think if you are if you are if you want to sell, mm -hmm. you need to uh, sell with the market price. Sometimes yes, yes you can get uh, something above the market price, mm -hmm. but not too much. Okay. Not too much. So basically, you're saying at least price it right. Mm. Price it right, and the clients will come. Definitely. Mm. Definitely. All right. Um. So, in your experience, what are the some of the biggest mistakes that are made by home buyers? They lose good properties. They take their time when uh, buying a property. They see a property, they mm -hmm. feel they they're going to get a better property. Mm -hmm. They go the moment they realize there's nothing better than that property, it's gone. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So I think when you see something, I think I need to say this: when you see something and you like it, go for it. Otherwise, the market is not waiting for you yeah yeah i think that's that's an interesting point mm. because you've seen so many people who come today and then they come next week and then they ask is that property is still available it's not it's gone it doesn't wait for you it doesn't wait for you yeah that's so i think for home buyers um yes i think with properties it's different than in getting in a shop you want to buy a what can i say you want to buy a, a nail polish you find another brand, you go to another, you find another brand. When you go back, because they are bought in bulk, you find it. Real estate is unique. You will mm -hmm. not find the same property. Mm -hmm. And you can't and say you're doing... It. Exactly. You, you can't. You can't. It's special. It's unique in all aspects. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you find something that you like, just go for it. Good. And then, um, looking at our daily routine, um, how do you negotiate? How do you find negotiations? <laughs> because we are always negotiating. Mm. Uh, uh, negotiating. Some actually call us property negotiators. Yes. Yeah. So how 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 is that for the end of You can't be a realtor and not be good in negotiations because we are doing negotiations all the time. Day in, day out. My husband normally laughs at me every time you buy something. <laughs> I ask him, "Did you negotiate? <laughs> you could have gotten it at a cheaper price." <laughs> He was fixing his car this other time it was a dent mm -hmm. how much did they charge you 100 did you try to negotiate to 80 you're not even there you don't even know <laughs> it's now in built like yeah. that yeah. so i i believe they are stressful there are some very stressful negotiations mm -hmm. but i feel like at the end of the day because everybody has a common goal the seller wants to sell the buyer wants to buy you always get to a point where everyone is uh, happy good that is the skill of negotiation good, good. Yeah, and then um, talking of negotiation, I'm sure you've had so many challenges in real estate. Sometimes you negotiate for months. I had a transaction that I negotiated mm. for four months, um, to say the least. How? Uh, what's? What's? Can you can you tell us of a challenge that you've had in your real estate? Um, <laughs> your world real estate experience. I mine was your. It was huge. It was a very huge challenge. I didn't know I was going to maneuver it. Okay, tell us about it. I had a seller. Mm -hmm. He is in South Africa. Mm -hmm. He was buying a. He was selling his property in Kadoma. <laughs> <laughs> you are laughing already. <laughs> 
So um, this seller um, was selling his property in Kaduma, mm -hmm. and I got a buyer in South Africa mm -hmm. who was coming to buy the property in Kaduma. Okay. Both are in South Africa. Both are in South Africa, okay. but they want to transact here. All right. And the seller, then uh, the buyer confirmed, he sent his people on ground, he mm -hmm. sent his brothers, they confirmed the stand was good. It was a stand that was overlooking the mountain. Okay. They confirmed it's good, it's nice, go ahead. Mm -hmm. And he said he's coming to buy. I said, do you confirm? Because the seller has to come. He has to fly to come All here. All the way. All the, the way. Transaction. And he's saying, I'm in for it. I mm -hmm. want the stand. Mm -hmm. I confirmed three times out there. Mm -hmm. I confirmed three times and said, no, I'm coming to buy. The seller booked his flight tickets and he showed me, I'm coming, Michelle. When I saw that, I also confirmed because I was also skeptical. Hey, you know, mm -hmm. did the buyer come? Mm. The seller had used his money. Wow. Wow. I think that was the biggest challenge I had. We don't want to talk more. We don't want to talk he more. He shouted at me, the wow. guy. He shouted at me. Wow. Michelle, what, 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 what was I supposed to do? I tried everything I could. There was an offer form, a signed offer form. Mm -hmm. The person wanted to buy. The the brothers had gone on the mm -hmm. ground. They'd seen it. They'd liked it. Mm -hmm. Chances were very slim. You would bail out. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think those are some of the things that we go through. Yeah, I'm sure all the realtors have, have faced a challenge or two in the industry, yes. and uh, because you're dealing with people. You are bound to have this challenge. And he wanted me to reinvest his flight tickets. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> he, he wanted me. He actually came to my boss. He came to our offices and he wanted to see my boss for the reinvestment. Oh, wow. That's when my boss sat him down and he was like, no, it doesn't work like this. It doesn't work like this. Wow. Yes, yeah, we understand the challenge, but uh, it's purely no one's fault. Oh, wow. Yeah. Anyway, finally. Um, I would want to ask a question that, you know, interests, uh, doesn't interest the general public. Okay. What, what, what do you think sets you apart from the, from all other realtors, from me, for example? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I think my advisory role okay. is, mm -hmm. instead of selling, I advise people. And I think that is the art that most people should also attain mm -hmm. i would want someone who advises me more than sell to me because i know when you're selling to me exactly. you have something you're exactly. benefiting but if you're advising me mm -hmm. you're independent i'll give you the the pros mm -hmm. and the cons, the cons. and then you get to choose yeah and yes. the same thing when in a shop you're thinking someone will advise you should buy this one mm -hmm. abc you obviously start thinking by yourself and you make a decision that is well bought okay. and um also, I think it's because I am um, I'm more of a property investor myself. Okay. Being in land development, it has taught me a lot. I buy and sell stands. Wow. I buy a stand when no one sees value in it. Wow. And they are, when they start developing, I sell it to you. Because there are some people who don't see by just looking at mm -hmm. the ground. Mm -hmm. you, want to be, you want to see what is already there. Those are the people I benefit from. Good. Good. So I will advise people mm -hmm. because I'm doing that Good. in my own life. Good. Once again, madam, it was a pleasure having you. And uh, if you have any questions concerning the life of realtors, I must say, please don't hesitate, comment, and then also like and subscribe. Cheers. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Salda.